was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. I am your co-host Liz. And I'm your co-host Natalie. And tonight we have Tia from North Carolina on. Tia is a photographer and money coaching with women primarily. I'll let her more explain more about that. But Tia, thanks so much for coming on. We're happy to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to see other women <laughs> right now. <laughs> Love it. So if you want to go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and we can go from there. So I am a military spouse of, it'll be 15 years next year. And I have two beautiful babies. They're not babies anymore. (laughs) One is 19 (laughs) and one is 13. And yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I started off as a photographer, a portrait photographer, and branding photographer for women entrepreneurs, which led me into money coaching for women, because that really helped me and my business really make money. And it, I wanted to help more and more women grow in business and not get so frustrated. So that's what I do. And yeah. I love being a mom, I've wanted to be a mom my whole life. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you want to kind of go ahead and go into just finding out that you were pregnant with your first and then what their pregnancy was like. Okay. So I was married before. So she is from my previous marriage and we wanted to have a baby and tried because I'm a numbers person. And I was like, you know what? And this is before all the things happened with Columbus day. But I, as I grew up, So I'm in my 40s now. I wanted my child to have a long weekend birthday and I timed it out. So like (laughs) she would be born around. That was my first try and it worked. And finding out, like we planned this. And then the moment I found out and took the test, I was like, what did I just do? (laughs) Like all of a sudden I understood like morning sickness. I understood all of the things because I was like, because I just altered my life, but you couldn't, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. And and then I was excited. I was just, because obviously I wanted to do it, but like that moment when you realized, oh, this was like a life altering decision Mm -hmm. with her. I, the only things that I can say about the pregnancy was very textbook. I only threw up once. And that is because I had food poisoning, but I felt ill most of the time Mm. at the beginning. And I was exhausted and I was sure I was having a boy. And then they said, no, it's a girl. I was like, are you sure? (laughs) It was the only reason why I knew she was alive every day. She would have the hiccups. So (laughs) I felt I was like, she's still there. She's still good. So I fun fact about me is I wanted to be a midwife way back in the day. And I studied everything about pregnancy and I loved all the things. I kept a journal. I was very type A about pregnancy. (laughs) And I remember craving colors. Like I wanted everything pastel and I wanted lobster and strawberries. Like she was was very bougie (laughs) pregnancy. I love um, that. (laughs) uh, I had her on her due date naturally, like woke up at four in the morning. And I was like, Oh, this is real. Like, and and then I started throwing up for sure. And we had to drive an hour. I was up in New York and it was beautiful. It was fall. So the drive there was gorgeous, except every bump was terrible. (laughs) And I had a midwife because I had a pretty normal pregnancy. I was 25 and I wanted everything natural. I didn't take Tums. I didn't take anything. I was like super paranoid about everything, but the day that I was in labor, I was like, can I chew a baby Tylenol? (laughs) And then I immediately threw it up. So that was pointless. And I didn't have my water break until like, right before I had her. And then I got in the birthing stool. And the first push, I was like, I'm not doing this for very long. And my husband at the time was behind me and I was down on the floor in this birthing stool. And he was wrapped around me and they were like okay now push and my mom and my grandmother in the room and like all the people and 
I was like, I can't. And they're like in unison, yes, you can. And I was like, no, I mean, I can't move my arms because he was squeezing me so tight. Like he would push when I was pushing, but I had her out in 22 minutes. I was like, I am not doing this. Like I screamed for my mom and she came over and she tapped me on the shoulder and she's like, I, I can't do anything for you. <laughs> like thanks and and then I remember laying on the bed and I was looking at her and she was huge to me I was like how the heck did that just come out of me (laughs) she well she laid her on my belly and I was like oh what like it was so euphoric the feeling of being done it was the best high I've ever had in my life right after until you do the afterbirth, which no one talks to you about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sucked. But when I saw her little face and I thought, oh, my gosh, how is she mine? She is so beautiful. And that's when so I was bullied growing up and I was told that I was ugly and all of the things. And I really mm-hmm. believed it until I saw her and I saw me and I was like, she is gorgeous. I just didn't know how pretty I was until I saw her. And that was beautiful. And after her, after I gave birth and I did the breastfeeding, I breastfed for almost a year and a half with her. And it was rough just because the latching and she was like a shark. Like (laughs) I would have bloody nipples. It was rough. But I did it and she was, she looked like a little person, like this little muscular thing. And she was seven pounds, 10 ounces. So very normal, like very average, (laughs) but she was beautiful. And we had a lot of tragic things happen right after and during that time. So like I said, we were living up in New York and my sister was pregnant at the same time and she had her daughter a month later. So they were six weeks apart and she looked like a normal baby, like Buddha belly, the whole thing. And mine looked like a soldier came out. Like she was just so muscular, (laughs) but my husband's best friend had committed suicide and I had just had my daughter and was very distracted by that. So I had figured it out that day that something bad was going to happen. And I was going to talk to my husband that night because I could just feel it. But pregnancy, I was distracted. And I always felt like, I wonder if I wasn't what I've been able to figure it out earlier. And then a month later, we needed to get out of that town because it was a small town we grew up in. My brother lived in South Carolina, so we moved down there. And then as we were traveling down, mind you, with I had two no one dog two cats ferret I think ferret then oh, it was nuts in November so there was snowstorms it was awful my grandmother died on the way down and then um his dad got diagnosed with lymphoma a month later so we had a lot of tragic things happen Mm -hmm. in a short amount of time, becoming new parents. And we kind of went into, we're just friends zone because I became his mother. Like I was taking care of him and I was taking care of our kid. And so we didn't work out. We're still friends because we went through all that together, but our roles switched so drastically Mm -hmm. with all the trauma. And we were young. We didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. After, oh, also... I had at my six week appointment, they found out that I had a thyroid issue and we were already down South. So I went, ended up at Duke to check my thyroid and they said that I had Graves disease, which gives you very much anxiety. I would have like panic and like shakes and like just afraid of everything. And especially when you have a child. And a little girl at that, like all of a sudden, everything's dangerous in the world. Mm. Like you, the whole world got small for me. And so we moved around North Carolina a few times before we decided to divorce. And we still lived together. And I was dating outside of that. And he was dating. And um, that's when I met my future husband. I 
in the middle of my divorce. And he, and my husband, my ex-husband would say, I traded him for a younger version because <laughs> my, <laughs> my husband, my ex-husband is four years older than me. And my new husband is five years younger than me. <laughs> like there's like a nine year gap, but uh, they got along great. They would go to the movies together. Like that was funny, but I couldn't have asked for a better, like combined family kind of thing. And when I met my husband, he was younger. So he was 24 at the time. And my daughter was a three going on four when we met. And he was in the reserves. And I didn't know that because I never wanted to marry a military man. I was like, ah, I'm not about that life. And then, <laughs> then he, within a month of meeting him, he got called to active duty to go to Iraq. So mm -hmm. our first year together was writing letters and on the phone talking and hearing uh, like I could hear the war going on behind him and it was very stressful he came home halfway through they get a two-week vacation and he asked me to marry him uh -huh. and I said yes and at first I was like how do you say no like what if he dies like I'm gonna look like such a jerk <laughs> But no, I did really love him. There was something about him and I and when we met and it couldn't have taken place any other time because uh, there was no way I was going to look at a <laughs> younger man like that. Like, no. <laughs> and I was very picky because as a mom meeting a new guy, like you have to be special. Like you have to either want that role or mm -hmm. like we're just hooking up and I'm leaving. Like that's it, right? <laughs> So truth be told, and I just figured I was never going to be married. I was never going to find that. And he popped up in my life at the right time. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he came home, I was considered pregnant the day he landed on U.S. soil. <laughs> it was two weeks later, but you know how they do that. And we had already planned on getting married in July. Like we had already planned all that. And I was angry because I wanted a... April baby. Like I said, I plan everything. So he was a March baby and I was mad, but <laughs> you know, it happens. And he went active duty and we got married and we moved to Fort Bragg. So we got local and I was happy about that because my daughter's father and we were here for seven years. So we had a blended family growing up and he is actually my son's godfather <laughs> so uh, yeah and um so with that pregnancy I was already mad <laughs> that I got pregnant without like immediately and couldn't plan and I remember I took the test because I couldn't stand certain smells and my friend was like are you pregnant and I was like but I've always had a, like a super nose and I took it. I was like, great, I'm pregnant. And I feel so bad about that because it, it was his like first blood child. Like he considers my daughter his, but he was like, yay. And I'm like, man, now I have to move being pregnant. Like I was so mad. <laughs> and while we were moving, it was a month later, I was sick. I could feel my thyroid getting overactive. I couldn't lower my heart rate. And, um, I didn't have a doctor yet or anything. Mm -hmm. And I knew something was wrong or different. I knew it was me. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to die. And I remember laying on the couch multiple days, just trying to get my heart rate down. And I could only get it to like 95 on a good day. And I was super scared. And we found out we were having a boy and I was angry and I, I was angry the whole time. I don't, it was probably the testosterone, but he turned out to be a mama's boy. Just so you know, like he's <laughs> my baby. And I started having hard contractions at nine weeks on. Mm -hmm. It was not Braxton Hicks because I knew the difference from being pregnant before. So I am, I was constantly worried I was going to have a miscarriage, which was a high risk yeah. of Graves disease. And I felt like I wasn't gaining enough weight. I felt like, like, I just felt like stuff was wrong mm -hmm. until the last, I almost said semester, Sorry. last trimester. <laughs> Can you uh, um, 
tell me like what is Graves disease? I don't really okay, know. Okay, so it's it. hyperthyroid. It's where it's an autoimmune disease and they usually come in pairs where you have extra thyroid. So you get panic attacks, you sweat a lot, you're shaky, you have high anxiety, you can't gain weight. It's it's awful. Mm-hmm. It's awful. So like the opposite of that is Hashimoto's, I believe. And that's low thyroid, which is very, very common in women. And that's like the depressive. So I was like complete opposite of that. I have, I I have, sorry, I have hypothyroid and it's, yeah, it's never been to Hashimoto's, but like, I feel that it could possibly be like in the future just because my, my sister and everything, but yeah, like my thyroid is very, very underactive. Like there's nothing there. Yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, it and it dictates everything in your life. Yeah. So, and you're probably exhausted all the time, like feeling sluggish. So yeah, yeah. I just got diagnosed with like an an anemic this pregnancy too. So I was like feeling so exhausted, and I'm like, why does it feel like I've been hit by a train? And I was like, my thyroid has to be off. My thyroid was looking great. I've in this pregnancy, my thyroid's been like up and down, up and down. So it's been a headache. And then they said that I was anemic and I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense now too. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, There's a liquid iron. Yeah. That, and then make sure you're taking vitamin C as well. Okay. That's good to know. And because it helps absorb the iron. Oh, good to know. And B vitamins. (laughs) That helps transfer the iron into the cells as well. So. Thank you. Yes. Good info. <laughs> I have a lot of medical issues. So I, I could, I'm, I'm a pseudo doctor now. So with the hyperthyroid, you get exhausted because your heart is racing all the time and your body's using all this energy. So you're also exhausted just like, but for different reasons mm-hmm. or different cause rather. Mm-hmm but it's very similar. And I am triggered by pregnancy. My thyroid is. And that's why I chose never to go on medication because I was like, it went back to normal slowly. Because once you get pregnant, your body is like with the hormones. And I was like, well, to me that that's just how my body reacts. I'm not giving medical advice on that. I'm just saying like, that's what I chose to do. And I chose not to go on anything while pregnant because they couldn't promise a healthy baby. So I took my chances and also iodine. I cut out iodine. I Mm -hmm. switched to sea salt and tried to stay away from anything with iodine because that, that should help you Mm -hmm. thyroid if it's low. And so I was due March 15th, which was a good number for me. I like zeros and fives. (laughs) A little neurotic. Me too. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) And I was, I had fan or no friends come into town and we had a barbecue and it was like a random Wednesday night. It was the 11th. I was like, I'm not due. I had my beat, my first on her due date. Like everything should be fine. And I was cooking shrimp scampi. We were singing rock band. Like I was literally singing and I was still having the same contractions. And if I walked too much, they would like amp up and then I'd sit down and they would go away. So I just thought that was happening. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) my friends were like, "Mm, do you sure you want us to leave? Because they were two hours away. I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll let you know if anything happens. But like I was talking through the contractions because I was used to them. And every night I would have my cottage cheese <laughs> because it helped with the heartburn. It had to be live active cottage cheese. And my husband, he he had always said, oh, we're going to go to the hospital and it will take hours. I told him like, it's usually that. So that night, and I told him he wasn't allowed to drink beer or anything, but I allowed him to have one beer that day because we were having friends over. And that night, they all leave. 
I have my cottage cheese. I'm laying in bed and I'm like, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I go to the bathroom and I was like, maybe we should go get checked out. So I'm, I am on next to the crib, like doing my swaying back and forth, stretching my hips and my water breaks and my pants fall all the way to the floor. I was like, <laughs> oh crap. And I'm just bottling to the toilet. And all I'm thinking is they're going to make me have this baby. It like within 24 hours. And if he doesn't come, they're going to cut me open. Like that's what was going on in my head. And I waddle to the toilet and he calls his mom and tells her, and she was like, I already took a Tylenol PM. I can't drive (laughs) and hangs up. And I was like, I need a bucket. I'm going to throw up. And he gets me that. And then He's like, can you make it to the car? And I feel down there and the baby's head is there. And I was like, I'm not making it anywhere. Could you call 911, please? Oh my God. Oh my God. And I literally stood up, two pushes, sat back down. I had grabbed him and twisted him. I read, randomly read the chapter twice on if you have to give birth by yourself. <laughs> so I knew what to do. And I, it was like second nature. And I just put him on there and I was like, Oh, he's got blonde hair. I have very dark hair. <laughs> my daughter has very dark hair and my husband has blonde, but I didn't know if he would. And he did. And my husband looked like a deer in headlights. He just yeah. stood there watching me do this. <laughs> and he's like, all of a sudden he snapped back in and he's like, is he breathing? Like he started freaking out and he gets a towel and I had the umbilical cord and I had lifted it up and did the whole thing. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do. And I pinched it just so no blood would go back and um, called 911 and the ambulance came and the firefighters and everybody comes into my bathroom. I had a huge bathroom at the time with a stretcher and they're like, Oh, he's already here. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So they put me on and they're like, who wants to cut the cord? They were so happy. And my husband's like, I do. Like, <laughs> <it's> mine. <laughs> so he cut the cord and they took my blood pressure and they were like, you have the best blood pressure I've ever taken. I can't believe this. So I tried to latch him on as they were taking me to the hospital and went in and they treated him like he was a crack baby and born on the street because <laughs> I wasn't at the hospital. So they took him and did a bunch of tests. And then I had to do the placenta way late, but I didn't have to have any stitches. Oh, with my daughter, I had to have two stitches. Not bad. And with him, nothing. They called it road rash, like where you just stretch out. <laughs> and that's what they said. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I remember going to my six week appointment and I said, since you didn't do anything, can I get money back? For this? <laughs> no, you can't. It's like a contract thing. Like, <laughs> so just so you know, even though I did all the work, <laughs> the end, yeah. it didn't really hit me until we got home two days later and I was showering and I washed my belly and I was like, oh my gosh, I just had my kid by myself. Holy, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But it was the easier recovery because of I wasn't in anguish of hours of like strolling around. Like with my daughter, I felt like I got hit by a truck, like literally Mm -hmm. everything on my body hurt after Mm -hmm. I had her. Mm -hmm. And with him, it was so quick that I didn't like I was just doing normal things (laughs) that I recovered pretty quickly. So that was a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have like doctor or midwifery care with your son? Yeah, I had a midwife. That's why like you do a back then, I don't know what they do now, but you sign like a contract type thing Mm -hmm. and the insurance pays them for the entire thing. And that's why I was joking with her. I was like, well, do we get money back for that? (laughs) Because you pay for the entire pregnancy and delivery at once. Oh, gotcha. So did like, what, what did she say when you were saying that you were feeling contractions at nine weeks? Nothing really. They were just like, oh. did they do more like testing, like stress test or anything like that? I mean, I did all the normal stuff. I didn't have anything yeah, going on. Hmm. I don't know. It was very strange. Yeah. I just thought it was the thyroid stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I will say that he was skinnier than my daughter and the umbilical cord was way tinier. So mm-hmm. I was worried about that because he kind of, to me, he looked a little bit sickly. He wasn't, he was okay. He was less than my daughter. He was six, 10, I think still full term. He was only four days early. So I would mm-hmm. consider that okay. And he had never, so my daughter was always on the 95th percentile for height. And my son didn't even get on the chart, like on the height chart (laughs) until he was like over a year old. Like he was just tiny. Mm -hmm. So I thought my daughter was going to be tall. So most of her life, I was like, you're going to be taller than us. She made a bet with my husband. Now 50 bucks that she would be taller than him. He's five. We're tiny people. I'm, I'm five, four. And she's my height and she's pissed still. (laughs) And my son just passed me, so I don't know. He might be taller than all of us, so it's so (laughs) random. You can't go by those charts, you know? (laughs) No, you can't. It's so random. (laughs) So how was your, like, thyroid and Graves' disease after you had him? Okay, so it was high, um, but it started going down slowly. And I decided because I was breastfeeding him as well. And I breastfed him for about a year and a half as well. And it took about five years to get like from pregnancy until about five years to get in the normal range for my thyroid. Hmm. Did you take anything? No, no. Just watched what I ate and was like very just conscious of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been taking levothyroxine my whole life because mm-hmm. I was, I was diagnosed like right after birth and like, I'm just at a crazy number now. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. That's <laughs> I've never been this high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep adding. So yeah. Yeah. That's gotta be hard. I've never had to. That's the other thing too, with thyroid medication is that your thyroid naturally changes every day. So Mm -hmm. it's hard to figure out like what dose is good for you. And I was like, I am not about to ride that train. (laughs) Yeah. My body's trying to go back to normal and Mm -hmm. then adding stuff. That's why I chose not to. I was like, I gave myself, I said, if it's going in the right direction, then I'm not going to do anything. But if it had stayed or done something that I, I would have for sure. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, well, I'll just let my body see what it does. And I, I got lucky. Yeah. With that. Good. Unlucky in other things, but you know, <laughs> yeah. win some, lose some. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so after your friends left from your, from like you saying that you were in labor, how long was that? Like an hour. They had, they turned around and came back and got to see me in the hospital. Oh my God. <laughs> they were like, that's why. Cause it was my, my maid of honor was there. Like she was like, I missed it. <laughs> like she was so <laughs> mad, but she got to be one of the first ones to hold him. So mm, that's that was nice they, to have them they, there. We're almost there. That would have been wild. <laughs> yeah. A house full of people. I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, we have pictures of that too. Like I'm posing, I'm singing, I'm doing, because nine, at at nine weeks having contractions, like I was so used to it. Yeah. I didn't, I was like, I'll for sure know. I did. I knew something was up. Because I was like, eh, it's a little more, but I was like, is it because I'm stressed because I'm hosting a party? Is it because I've been on my feet all day? But I should have known because I did have some show start showing Mm. and I was like, "Mm," but that could happen days ahead. Yeah. Still even I was like, "Mm." but (laughs) I need to see these pictures. (laughs) So I'll have to ask you for them. And also like, it's just like so wild how everybody's body is so completely different because you were like, I was used to the contractions while like some people, you know, would go to like their 40 week appointment and be like absolutely zero centimeters dilated. Yeah. It's like wild. Yeah. I mean, 
Well, I had a doctor's appointment the week before and I was, I think they checked me. I was only, I was like two. Yeah. Animators, but like, that's normal in that, you know, yeah. it, but that's the strange thing about the human body is that it kind of knows what to do mm-hmm. on its own mm-hmm. and things can happen so quickly. So yeah. I calculated like when they started. So with my daughter, it was textbooks, 12 hours. I started at four in the morning, four thirty, and I had her at four twenty-two in the afternoon, and that was great for me because I got to sleep the night before. I feel so like that was another reason why I was I was just angry the whole pregnancy for my son because I was like at night and I was like, man, now I, oh, all right, I'll go get checked. Like I was so mad, but I got my wish. I didn't even have to like <laughs> have him at the hospital. But from start to finish of when I think that I started actual labor, it was about six hours. So it was like half the time. And I had talked to my aunt on my father's side, which I tend to medically fall in line with that side of the family. And especially my aunt, I've gotten every disease that she's had. (laughs) So it's kind of falling in line. But she said every pregnancy, it would half the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would only have like a three hour (laughs) I would not have time, but it also, my mom too, she had three, I was the oldest and with my sister, she was the youngest and she had her in the ambulance. She didn't even get to the hospital either. So, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Wow. you guys have some bodies that know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then my sister had a really hard, she didn't get that. <laughs> my sister had some issues and she ended up having four kids but I knew like with my pregnancy with my son and like my thyroid and getting older I was like I don't think my body could do it again Mm -hmm. even though I always wanted to be a mom and I got that I got my wish and I had a boy and a girl I couldn't ask for more yeah very blessed yeah terrific kids (laughs) Mm, that's awesome so well I don't think I've said so she is 19 now and she she is so funny when she was little I had her try everything and the only sport that she was actually good at because I always wanted to be a dancer and I was like she was terrible like terrible (laughs) and I got her into fencing and she was a natural so she's like you know she's into Dungeons and Dragons like her dad or like Comic-Con, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then my son, I started him in soccer and all of the things. And he has been in dance since he was three. He is an amazing dancer. So I got him a dancer. It just came in different forms. (laughs) So (laughs) I love that. (laughs) It's so funny. Yeah. My three-year-old son is in dance right now. And it's so fun. (laughs) Yeah. I, he's loved it. I mean, right now, after middle school, I homeschool now, he was bullied pretty bad. So he's kind of like trying not to be a dancer. And I'm like, mm, you were mm. like blessed and skilled in that. You, It's learning the balance when you're raising your children of being okay with who you are mm-hmm. and, and exploring all the things like it's just so hard and like I said to you guys earlier I'll share this little bit of advice because I don't think we were recording at the time it's hard all the time it just changes subjects so you know and motherhood and life is just it's one grief after another like when you find out you're pregnant you're grieving the life that you had And then once you're not pregnant anymore, you're grieving that you don't have a baby in your belly anymore. And then when they start crawling and you don't have an infant anymore and you don't have a baby anymore. And it's so strange because when I think back to when my son or daughter was a baby breastfeeding, like, obviously I can't pick, it's a totally different person. So you grieve that little baby. Mm -hmm. Fair warning, when they graduate and leave, all of that, all of those (laughs) things that you've gone through and grieved it's all accumulated into one event (laughs) when I leave (laughs) Uh, I didn't think it was gonna feel like that because I was trying to prepare you you can't like it's like it's just you know you know yeah 
Yeah. Like it's just something that you can't control and you just have to go through the motions of feeling it mm-hmm. and accepting the cool things of the next level, you know? Yeah. Level, leveling up. <laughs> yeah. I'm at level 19 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have like my sister, my nephew graduated high school this past year and Liz's niece okay. did at the same time. They're in the same class, but, um, like I have like my sister just like ugly crying like tears I have pictures of her and she was she was an emotional wreck but I loved it (laughs) yeah I I didn't cry I was shocked I didn't cry I didn't cry until oh god I don't I don't know so I told you Oh, what happened to me? So my daughter had graduated last summer and we are a military family and we had to move at the same time. And she went to basic training the same time, like Mm -hmm. a week before we moved, we shipped her out and, and then we had the movers come and then we had to move. And I have ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disease. And I was under a lot of stress. My husband had just got back from Korea. He missed my daughter's senior year. He missed her graduation, all of that. Mm. So within a month, he came home, she left, we moved, and I started failing. I started having a flare and we didn't find housing for about a month. And so I couldn't find a doctor for another month. So I was bleeding constantly and I became bedridden and it was the height of COVID for the area that I was in. And the nurses were like, don't go to the hospital. So I stayed home and I got a blood clot from my belly button all the way down my left leg and um, had to go to the hospital, had blood transfusions, had a filter put in and tons of medications and all the things. And I had a home nurse and physical home physical therapy to learn how to walk again. And so I was going through all of that as my daughter was going through basic and I couldn't share that with her because I didn't want to distract her. Yeah. Um, So that was the hardest part because her and I are very, very close. Yeah. That's, it's sort of like being a mom, you sacrifice a lot of things and protecting them in certain ways. And I was so scared. Like uh, that made me fight so hard to survive because I didn't want her to just like all of a sudden mom died. I went away and that would like leave her with so much trauma. Mm -hmm. And so I fought really hard and it worked. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm here and she is now moved. I didn't get to make it to her graduation or anything, but her daddy did. And they FaceTimed me and all of that. So, mm-hmm. but she's out in California and she's coming home in a couple of weeks for Christmas. So I can't Aww. wait to like, hug her. Oh my gosh. She came, she got to come home for Christmas last year after I was a month out of the hospital. And that's when I cried mm-hmm. and my husband took pictures of it and I ugly cry. Like <laughs> I just melted into her because both of our lives had changed so much in such a short amount of time. Like she became a woman. She just went through basic training. She just went out on her own and came home. And I just fought my fight to stay alive. And so like just holding, like she's my first true love, you know, like complete love. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I've gone through a lot. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Wow. Thank you for telling us. I know it's speechless. I am doing so much better and I'm so happy to be here and to share my story. Yeah. Hopefully maybe that'll help somebody else in some way. Yeah. Yeah. If not, it's entertaining. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I mean, like, you know, hearing that again it just you know I'm looking at you from like your face and I you know couldn't even imagine seeing anything like wrong or like the things that you've gone through but just hearing it again it just it you're such a fighter and 
I'm so glad that you and your daughter like had that moment together to like, you know, come back together after your fights. Yeah. Yeah. We're both warriors now. Mm -hmm. I was, just, I was surviving and I was a survivor and now I'm a warrior. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, I don't like to do victim mode. I mean, anything could happen to anyone and tragedy is happens to everyone mm -hmm. at different times and different levels. Yeah, definitely. I just want to be an inspiration to people. <laughs> you do. I, I know people can't see me and I don't know. Like, I feel like I've aged so much in the last couple of years going through this. So can you imagine how good I would look if I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> I don't dye my hair anymore. Like, I just look young. I'm very lucky in the last but on the inside, I'm deteriorating. <laughs> <laughs> I think you look great. <laughs> yeah. Fish, fishing for confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But. Well, we'll definitely have to connect your website and Instagram handles on our show notes so people can find out more about you and reach out. Absolutely. I would love that. I, I do meetups like on Zoom and stuff to connect with people. I love connecting with others. I have a huge network of random people in my life. I've <laughs> lived all over the country through the military. So if I can't help you, I'll find somebody that can. Thank That's you awesome. so much for having me. You guys yeah. are a delight and you look so cozy. You made this very easy. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I'm happy to hear it. And thank you for coming on and happy we could connect with someone, you know, totally outside Missouri again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm out there. <laughs> yeah. So I first started off as a photographer. So I called that time marker photographer photography. So it was marking this time in your life. And then with legacy living with Tia was my money coaching. And I combined that into one website as timemarkerlegacy.com. And I'm also a published writer and or author, and I'm, I do a lot of things with the military. So that's Tia's crazy life. That makes sense. <laughs> I kind of live up to that. I have tons of stories for probably every subject you can think of. And I have a YouTube and that's, I have interviews of amazing women and stuff on there too. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I love all that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm like, why the heck are they laughing? <laughs> <laughs>